Hey guys, Paleo Greenbird here, and I love to target shoot. It's one of the things I really enjoy doing. I guess it's my version of video games. I just uh, really enjoy it. But if you target shoot, then you know that um, targets can be really expensive, especially you know good ones if you want those uh, reactive shoot and sees, uh, things like that, which if you're shooting at distance, you really need them because once you put a couple holes in the paper, you can't really see where you're at. But when you get those reactive uh, targets, it really helps pop and you can see where you're hitting and where you need to adjust uh, but they can get they can get kind of expensive they're not cheap so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make reactive targets and there's a million videos out there so this is certainly not something that I've invented but uh, just thought it'd be something pretty cool I do it a little bit differently people will do anything from uh, using cardstock a uh, big cardstock of bright colors uh, to using uh, sticky sticky notes that they'll uh, tape over, you know, bright yellow, orange, green, whatever it is. Um, I just happen to have an overabundance of these shipping labels. You see how they, they peel right off and they're sticky on the other side. And I, that, I really enjoy using those because, uh, you know, if you use the cardstock or if you use cardboard or anything else like that, then you have to fix the target uh, to you know, what you're using for a base for the target, whether it be a cardboard box or, in my case, I have a big stack of old wood uh, probably about four feet deep, and then I have a target full of uh, cardboard and plywood inside there that catches most of what I shoot. I only, I only shoot 22s uh, at my house. I, any, anything higher than that, I'll, I'll go to a range, I'll go to a, a proper range. Um, so this is what I do. It's real easy, real simple. I take these pieces of vinyl. Like I said, you could use uh, cardstock, you could use sticky notes, you could do whatever you want. But I found this, uh, actually my wife found this, at the dollar store. And it was so obviously it was a dollar, and it's just uh, you know vinyl. It's just really lightweight vinyl. Uh, she picked it up because she was hoping that she'd be able to use it in the cricket that we have, or, or cry cut, or however you pronounce it. And it's just too thin for that. So uh, it, it'll cut the blade will cut through and cut the sticky mat. If you're familiar with the cricket, it'll cut the sticky mat that's below it. So I was fortunate enough to inherit this. So I'm super excited. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, this high contrast pink uh, vinyl one on each one of these shipping labels that's the first step and that's kind of a, an art it took me a little while to figure out how to do that and get all the bubbles out and I'm working kind of at almost knee length or knee height so I don't know if this will be perfect or not but we'll just just give it a shot I find that if I put down one corner and just kind of work it in a diagonal fashion that seems to do a really good job getting the air bubbles out. I want a piece of plywood right now, though it's got some dirt on there. I probably should have cleaned that off, so I'm gonna get, I'll probably get a few bubbles, but so far it's actually looking pretty good. So just get that in there, try and get all the air bubbles out. That's another thing I like about the vinyl is that when you're using a postcard, I'm sorry, a sticky note or the cardstock, it's a lot harder to get all those air bubbles out because you have to kind of finesse it uh, so that the sticky note stays flat and while you're putting the next step while you're putting the tape on there, it doesn't pop up. Uh, so this vinyl just works fantastic. I love it. And uh, I'm hoping that the dollar store will have more of it because you never know what the dollar store is going to have. Their stock fluctuates pretty, um, I don't know, pretty often. You never know what they're going to have. So I'm going to try it again with this. And it just occurred to me that while I was showing you the vinyl, I didn't even check to see if I was in frame because my tripod only goes up so high. I probably should have put it on a chair or something, but here's the vinyl. It is, uh, how many feet is it? Does it say here? Yeah, 13 inch, so there's 13.5 inches wide by 4 feet long, so you can get a lot of targets out of that. I don't know how exactly how many I've gotten out of this pink, but I'd say probably maybe 30, 40. Nah, probably not that much. Probably closer to, yeah, actually probably 30, 35, 40, something like that. Now that I think of it because I used a couple. So here's the first step. You're going to get that nice and flat, nice and free of air bubbles, stuck to whatever it is you're going to use. Um, and again, if you're not using sticky backed vinyl, then this step is simply going to be just literally placing it on there somehow. And uh, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to cover this in clear tape. It's very important that you cover it with clear tape. That is what the paint is going to stick to so that it pops when you hit it. So I'll be right back with my tape. 
Okay, so I have my, uh, my trusty tape gun here. I'm not going to use it like a tape gun, but that's where my tape is, so that's where it is. One thing that I've noticed about these labels, I don't know if other paper is going to do it for me or not, because, um, you know, I guess you could use cardboard, and that won't happen. But these, these tend to curl up in the cold. I noticed that when I made my last batch. I actually did all of this stuff inside the house, and then when I brought them out to, to finish them, after I spray painted them, it, it did warp. It had a bow in it, so it's got to be the cold. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of tape here, and you will probably I'm probably going to trim these a little bit anyway, so I'm not worried if I put a little too much tape on. Um, whew, boy, this is going to be just barely wide enough. In fact, it's not going to be. I could probably make that work, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to get another piece of tape. Make it a little bit longer this time. All right, and this is what usually happens. Usually I get it a little bit too long. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the vinyls. I'm just going to start at the corners. The good thing about the vinyl, too, is if you do get an air pocket, you can pull it right off. It doesn't give you much problem. It doesn't peel away the, the uh, surface like the paper does. So, got a little bit of air there. The curvature in here is not helping. Uh, it's giving me a very concave surface to work on. All right, so I'm over on the edges. I could care less. It's, I can just trim that off. Gonna get all the air off, and then on my second pass, it's important to make sure that you're doubling up. Not doubling up, but you're overlapping. That's what that's the word I meant. Um, because what you don't want is when it comes time to paint. Oops, let's see, let's fix that. When it comes time to paint, you don't want any paint getting in and touching that paper, or in this case, the vinyl. Okay. Of course, it's gonna give me a hard time. All right, there we go. I think we got it this time. And I'm not so worried about some of these uh, air bubbles that are on the bottom where the pink isn't at. I mean, ideally, I would want them. I would want to not have that right there. I would want to have it completely smooth because you're, it's still going to show up when I paint it. But I'm probably going to trim that off anyway because when I shoot, I, I would shoot at a target probably half that size. Right? That's way too big. I mean, if, you, if you're zeroing in, maybe but I usually try and shoot something no bigger than a baseball at the very big, at the very largest. All right, so there's one side. Perfect, now let's do the other side. For me, it just works out better if I flip it up. You can do it however you want. A piece of tape. If you wanna get all technical and measure these pieces of tape so that they're perfect and they don't Extend over the paper. I've done that. I've, spent, I've taken the time to do that. It does make it easier when you trim, but it takes a lot extra time, so... It does also save tape, I suppose, so that's... There's that. Overlap it a little bit. Get that air bubble out. Got a little one in there, but I'm going to leave it. I think I can get most of it out. And that's what you're going to be left with. Um, I guess I could fold that under if I wanted to. I'm not going to do it though. So that's what you're left with. So that's that vinyl or your sticky note or your cardstock, whatever you're using, covered in clear tape. Overlapped a little bit. Nice and secure and tight on there. And now I'm gonna get the paint. We're gonna go on to the next step. Okay, so I'm back. You can see I trimmed up our target a little bit. I'm just gonna work on this one piece right here. I'll cut it in half afterwards, but just for the sake of this video, uh, I thought I would just work this one piece. If I try and bend it back a little bit flatter. So what we're gonna use is some uh, black flat paint. The, the most important part is that this is flat paint. Um, I was unable to find really any super cheap paint, so I got this. I think it's Rust-Oleum. Uh, it was still only about four bucks, four fifty, I think it was, and I got the one that gives you twenty-five percent more. I have no idea why, but they had both of them. Both of them. They had this can, and then they had the smaller can, both the same price. So obviously, I went with the better deal. Uh, but it has to be flat black. You don't want any gloss um, or anything like that. Matte, I guess you could use, but um, the glossy stuff tends to when you shoot it, it flakes out. It, um, 
uh, what's the, it splatters way more than the flat black for whatever reason. Plus, it's easier to see the flat black when you have the glossy stuff. Sometimes when the sun hits it at that weird time of the day, which it is right now, actually, um, you know, it just works out better. And I'm going to use a glove just because sometimes it can get a little bit messy. It's not necessary. It's probably really not, uh, not necessary at all. You could use some breathing protection if you want to put a little mask on. There are chemicals in here. Again, not going not gonna to take the time to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, because we have the, the tape on there, I don't want to pull it up. I just want to give it a couple of nice thin coats. See, it's not even covering the whole thing, but I'm going to come back and get it again. I'll take a look. All these places where there are, let me see if I can zoom in if that shows it a little bit better. Um, all those places, and I don't want to pick it up right now, but I can't see anything. The sun is too weird, but I guess I'll just pick it up. All these places where there was a little bit of a crease or a wrinkle, you're still going to see a little bit of that pink underneath because um, I learned the hard way in order to get that to really be completely covered. You're going to put too much on there and it's going to take forever. Now I can see a little bit of a pink line in the middle there. So I'm just going to come back and hit it again. Sometimes if you hit it from the other side. And that's good. That's way more than enough. So now all I have to do is let this um, dry for probably 24 hours, depending upon the temperature. It's cold and a little bit wet, wettish here, so it's going to probably take overnight. So what I'll do is I'll just speed that up with a little bit of Green Bird Magic. All right, and there we go. Everything is dry in exactly the same shape as it was when I sped up time. So now there's nothing left to do but to put it on our target and see if it works. So I'm going to peel off. Again, this is a shipping label that I'm using, or some sort of a label. So I'm going to peel off the back, the sticky back, put this on. Oh, I forgot one very important thing. Hold on just a second. Have to have a point of aim, right? You can't just have a blank target. So what I did was I took some of that pink vinyl that I was using, and I just cut myself out a little circle. Right? I don't know if you can see that or not. The sun is just killing me here. So I'm going to take that backing off. There we go. Got it. Square one for the good guys. So now I'm just going to put it somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter where. And not very dark, is it? I should probably improve that. But anyway, at least I have a point of aim. So let's set it up and see what we can do. So today I'm going to be using my Ruger Impact 22 caliber air rifle. As you can see, I took the scope off because it's a piece of junk. Honestly, I'm not really too impressed with the rifle itself, but it is a nice rifle. It's nice and solid. It's heavy. It looks great. It's suppressed, so it's not going to wake the neighbors up. Air rifles can be really, really loud, actually. And what I'm going to be shooting for ammo is going to be these little plastic lead-free 22 caliber pellets. Now, I can get steel ones, I can get the hollow point, the hunting ones, and all that stuff, but uh, I got this gun to be a critter getter just to get rid of, you know, some mice in the yard and things like that. Uh, so this will suit me just fine. Breaks right at the breech. Put my pellet in there. Safety is on. Range is not hot yet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in so you can see what that splatter looks like. And I might do a couple. Now I'm not necessarily going to be aiming for that uh, center spot because I really just want to make sure I hit the box. I'm going to be pretty close anyway. I'm only going to be about 15 feet away. I just want you to see that splatter. Not a bad splatter. Let's do another one. That's fun. Like I said, video games for adults. Uh, I don't know if that, I think that was a flyer. See, that's why I don't like this gun. One minute you're spot on, the next minute you're three inches low, the next minute, minute you're two inches high. This gun is just not reliable. Let 
do one more. Ooh, I think I keyholed that first shot. Because I hear it rattling around in there. One more. This is fun. I keyholed it again. Well, I guess it's shooting consistent today. Maybe I should start aiming. Well, I was aiming, but maybe I should start aiming for that center spot. All right, that's enough for today. So you can see, hopefully you can see. Yeah, so you can see those splatter marks are real visible. Now, it's not showing up very well on the uh, screen here, but I'm hoping that you can see what I'm seeing because I'm seeing a lot of that pink popping out. All right, guys, so that is how you make a nice, easy, cheap splatter target or uh, shoot and see, whatever you want to call it. Um, super affordable. I mean, I had a dollar in the vinyl. I had, uh, well, the shipping labels were free, but if you bought them, I don't know, maybe a couple bucks for those. And the tape I had kicking around, but you know, you can go to the dollar store and get a roll, a big roll of um, that clear tape for a dollar too. So, three or four bucks, you've got yourself probably, well, I mean, you'd have yourself probably 40, 50 targets, and then all you would need after that to keep making more is just uh, more vinyl because everything else you're going to have leftovers. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any ideas, any pointers, any ways I can make this a little bit better, just let me know. And have an awesome day.